Why are Twinkies cheaper than carrots? How is it that something with 39 different ingredients can be cheaper than something that you just pull out of the ground? The short answer is that thanks to tax dollars that the government gives to mega farms to grow corn and just a few other crops, you've already bought many of the ingredients in this Twinkie long before it hits the store shelf. But for the longer answer, we need to go back a little bit. During the Great Depression, Congress created a series of programs designed to help the poverty and drought-stricken agricultural sector, which at the time was in danger of collapsing. Over the next 60 years, fewer and fewer Americans farmed for a living, and farms went from small family operations to giant agribusiness. And even though the Great Depression ended a long time ago, these subsidies didn't. And since 1995, they keep growing and growing and growing. Today, most of the subsidies don't go to struggling farmers, Instead, they go to the largest and most profitable agribusiness. In fact, only 4% of all American farms received over half of all the subsidies. And big companies means corporate lobbyists, gobbling up the subsidies like kids in a candy store. Let's all go to lobby. Since 1995, we've spent $245 billion in agricultural subsidies. And over 90% of those subsidies have gone to farmers of just five crops. And a third of the money goes to just corn. That's why high fructose corn syrup, which didn't even exist a generation ago, is now found in nearly every single processed food on the shelf. And meanwhile, giant food companies are making huge profits selling sweet, fatty food for super cheap, all on the taxpayer dime. There are over a dozen subsidized ingredients in this Twinkie, mostly an amalgamation of corn and soy products, including cornstarch, corn syrup, high fructose corn syrup, corn flour, corn dextrin, dextrose, partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, soy flour, soy protein isolate, soy lecithin, and more. Meanwhile, this carrot has zero subsidized ingredients. Besides being a little absurd to spend between 10 and $30 billion a year to make junk food cheap, this is also fueling an epidemic of childhood obesity in this country. And that's more than just wasteful spending. That's an outrage. It's becoming more and more expensive to eat healthy in this country and cheaper and cheaper to fill up on junk food. According to one study, a 2,000 calorie diet consisting of only junk food would cost just $3.52 a day. At that price, it's hard to imagine Americans not eating too much junk food. We consume 60 pounds of high fructose corn syrup per capita every single year. And we're feeling the effects. One in five kids between the ages of six and 11 are now obese and one in three kids born since 2000 are on track for diabetes. So many kids are getting diabetes now that they've stopped calling it adult onset diabetes and have started calling it type two diabetes. We all want kids to live long, healthy lives and the epidemic of childhood obesity won't be solved by cutting wasteful subsidies alone. But as long as cheap junk food continues to saturate the market and Twinkies continue to be cheaper than carrots, parents are fighting an uphill battle. For the health of our kids, it's time to end wasteful subsidies that are underwriting an epidemic of obesity. The Oregon State Public Interest Research Group, OSPERG, is calling on Congress to stop subsidizing obesity. You can learn more and take action at osperg.org. Thanks for watching, and thanks for taking action.